The Needham's Schroeder Protocol serves to establish a secure communication channel between two entities who do not yet share a key. In this short presentation I will explain how the protocol works. Meet Ali, Bertha and the Saint. Ali wants to exchange confidential data with Bertha. Ali wants to use symmetric encryption to encrypt the messages he will send to Bertha. Symmetric encryption is very secure and fast. If he and Bertha only share the key, then Bertha could decrypt his messages. But Ali doesn't have Bertha's secret key. However, Ali knows that Bertha and he both trust the saint. And the saint hence serves as trusted third party. Ali approaches the saint, typically over the network, and provides a plain text. In the plain text he indicates who he is, and that he wants to communicate with Bertha. He also provides a unique number, also known as a nonce. The nonce is important to prove freshness. I will tell you more about freshness later. Plain text can be read by any eavesdropper. Sending such a message indicates that Bertha and Ali want to communicate. But in practice, the participants on a network are expected to want to communicate, so this risk is an accepted risk. The saint receives Ali's plain text message. He has no way of knowing that the party that sent the message is really Ali, but simply assumes it is. The saint now generates a session key. This key will be used to encrypt the conversation between Ali and Bertha. The protocol is all about getting this session key to both Bertha and Ali in a secure way. As the saint has a secret key he shares with Ali, he now encrypts a message to Ali with Ali's key and sends it to Ali. Note that the message might be sent to somebody merely pretending to be Ali. However, the only two parties that have the key to decipher the message are Ali and the saint. So, an impersonator would not benefit much from receiving the message, as he couldn't decipher it anyway. Ali can decrypt the message from saint and inspects its contents. Part of the message is still enciphered with a key Ali doesn't have, and that part should be sent to Bertha later. The part Ali can read contains the nonce he sent before. Ali checks if it really is the same number. And as he knows when he sent it, Ali can be reasonably sure this is a fresh response from Saint, and not a replay of a message called by an eavesdropper before. The part of the message Ali can read also contains the session key the Saint generated. So, now Ali has the session key, but Bertha still hasn't. Ali now extracts the part he could not read after encrypting it, and sends it to Bertha. Ali has no way of finding out what is in that message. The only thing he knows for sure is that the saint sent this to him, and he trusts the saint. He proves right to have done so, as Bertha can indeed decrypt the message. Remember that Bertha and the saint share a secret key, and the part that Ali couldn't read was actually encrypted with that secret key. Now Bertha can decipher the message, and it contains Ali's name and the session key to use. Both Ali and Bertha now have the session key. Bertha now contacts the person mentioned in the message she just received, which is Ali. Note that an impersonator who would have replayed the message to Bertha would not be contacted as the message doesn't contain his address. But in our example, Ali is contacted and fully expects to be. Bertha has used the session key to encrypt the message she now sends to Ali. Ali uses his copy of the session key to decrypt the message, and he finds a number. He subtracts 1 
and encrypts the result again with a copy of the session key. And then sends it over to Bertha again. Bertha is able to decrypt the message using the now confirmed shared session key. And Bertha and Ali now have established a secure channel. They now can interact in a secure way without an eavesdropper understanding what they say to each other. In our example, the information exchange might as well have taken place in the clear. But in practice, Ali and Bertha are processors on a computer, and the conversation they have contains confidential data. This ends my presentation about the Needham Schroeder protocol. Feel free to share the video with anybody, but please only copy it in full and do not alter it. Thank you.